I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna change, change my notes now. No bother, no worries. Um, you just keep yourself on mute, mate. That'll help me. <laughs> <laughs> right, okie doke. Um, that's us recording. Right, bear with me. Can everybody see that screen again? Ben, am I back on the presentation screen? Not at this minute, I can't see it, just... Let me see what I'm sharing. Yeah, that, that's the first, that's the first, that, was the, that was the first slide up, James. Bear with me. Are you, are you back? Are we back on presentation? Uh, no, not at the moment. No, not at the moment. Yes. Yeah, you sh there yeah you're sharing your screen now, mate. Back. Yeah, there you're there, go. James. Yeah, spot on. Guys, okay. Um, welcome all. So um, I promise you I'm going to try not to talk about the current situation and we're going to try and talk, certainly coaching for the next hour. I thought um, when we, we sort of sat down once we'd... Uh, finished and we're, we're all working from home now um, was to look at ways to try and sort of engage with people and just try and give um, I suppose uh, an hour of the of the time back from what we used to so just some general housekeeping to get us started really um, you've got the function down the side to chat so feel free um, to use that function now um, Ben's monitoring that at the minute um, if you've got any problems, feel free. If you need to give Ben a call, do so. Um, but I think we're pretty much all all there, which is definitely a good start. Um, mute yourself and unmute yourself when you want. So we're going to try and make it as interactive as we can. Um, this first one's probably going to be about trying to... Uh, one, for certainly for me, is to uh, try and make sure the technology works um, and try and get a platform where we can connect with people um, on a more regular basis. So... Uh, your feedback around how this was, how it was logging in, etc., is very much appreciated because there's a number of opportunities, there's a number of options out there for this type of thing. Um, for me, it's just going to be to try and make sure that we get the best thing for for everybody. Mute yourself just keeps the background noise down. So if you do want to say something, unmute yourself and then and then chat. Um, use the chat function as we said. Um, moving forward. Okay. Um, what are we? What are we trying to do? So the idea behind behind this evening, really, uh, there's a few things. So I appreciate how much sometimes, and I've certainly seen it from working from home, um, that hour a week is away from, um, away out on the field and on the grass. So we're going to try and give that back, and that's going to come in a number of forms, really. Um, we're going to... I'll, I'll go through how it how it'll look moving forward, but um, we're going to try and bring you a variety of things. So there'll be guest speakers, Q and A's type thing. We're going to give you some content, so some things that we're going to share with you, and and that's going to be this evening. And just to try and get you, you thinking about something different, other than what's currently going on in the world. Um, so some will be the support, some will be the challenge. Q and A will work. So I've got basically when I put this out there on, on social media, I've had a number of people contact us saying, look, can I get involved? Now, my primary focus is on Cumberland and, and Cumberland coaches. So I've had some uh, people ask me, look, can we get involved? Can we can we join in um, that are outside of the county? So at the minute, the trial period is sort of certainly the next few weeks with yourselves, um, just to try and get make sure it works, get all the, all the little things ironed out and then go from there. Um, I asked for some key topics that what what do you want covered? So some people came back and said absolutely anything, which is fine. You're probably going to get some of that tonight. Um, but we've also got some specific stuff. What I'm going to try and do is match people. So if we had a couple of people um, have, have wrote in and said that they would like some stuff on um, managing behaviour, well, one of our colleagues um, does some excellent work and, and, and specialise sort of around that area. So I'm going to try and bring him in and, and match topics to that. Ultimately, it's going to be an online community. So, and, and as we get better at this and I get better at this and we as a, as a company get better at this, we'll try and make sure that it's a little bit more freer in terms of interactions online because I think we need. What I would say is as, as we go, um, just to try and have an open mind, this will evolve um, and I'm going to get some feedback from yourselves this evening on 
on what it'll uh, what it could potentially become, how often you want it, how regular do you want it, what times you want it at. Um, so I know this time in particular is a bad time for some <clears throat> when they contacted me. Uh, it was the time the kids go to bed. Now I've been quite selfish. I think that's why I picked it. Um, so I am currently in a room with the door shut and, and the kids are uh, kids are running around outside around to go to bed so I can stay out of the way of that. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll move forward and, and, and take some um, questions as we go. Bear with us, please, for this evening, because this is a, a, as much a, a challenge for us as it is for, for yourselves with the technology. So we're going to try and make it work. I'm going to hand over to Dave because Dave's going to take us through some some bits and pieces, um, and then I'm going to come back in afterwards and we'll we'll go through sort of what it looks like moving forwards. What I will say is just to keep an eye on time. There is a clap for the um, NHS at eight o'clock. We will be done for five to eight. So that's the that's the promise that we'll try and be done for five to eight. If we need to break, um, we will do. But that's that's the, the idea is to try and break um, to try and finish by then. Any questions so far um, on anything? Or is that pretty self, uh, self-explanatory and straightforward? All good, James. Um, if you do want to ask any questions, like I say, feel free if you want to unmute yourself or you just uh, put it in the chat box down the side of your computer and um, Ben or myself will manage that way. Happy though. Okay. Um, Dave? Do you want to take control? Just requested, mate. Just, just waiting for that approval. Go with me. Allow. This is the, this is the bit where he's, uh, it's a challenge for us. So we, me and Dave were practicing this earlier on, but um, whether we get it right, will, will be a different. So you, you need to share. Yes. There you go. Seamless. Absolutely seamless. Look at that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, you say that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, just before Dave starts, what because I, I said I was going to tee it up, what I, what I didn't say. What we've done just for the purpose of this evening is we've taken some some content based on what people have brought in to say, look, I'd, I'd like some more stuff on that. So we've taken one of those topics, which was around sort of that foundation phase and the DNA. Um, this is just one topic. So there'll be loads that come in and as we move through this in the weeks commencing, we'll cover as many topics as we can. Um, so again, just um, make sure that you um, shout up if there's something specific that you want. If this doesn't reply to you, don't panic. Uh, we'll make sure that in the weeks come on um, that you that we get covered with as much as we can. Happy, Dave. OK. I, th I think... Dave, I think we've just had a couple join, by the way. I think Marsh has just joined and somebody else. Um, yeah. So they've maybe just missed that. But don't panic, lads. We'll, we can cover it all as we as we go. Good with me, Dave. Good to go. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks, James. Um, so obviously, I know um, not everyone works in the um, uh, foundation phase. Uh, what I would say is um, sort of be our envoys. So... Um, if even if you don't coach foundation phase players, um, sort of spread the word. Um, so what we're going to look at tonight is a little bit of a an insight into possession as an individual event for the foundation phase players, uh, and it's just following on from the England DNA stuff that uh, that Pete Sturgis has, has started um, and on Hive and and, and done some roadshows uh, around the around the country, including uh, in Cumberland. Um, so we're just going to build on that really. Um, so, a little bit of what we're going to share share about tonight. Um, I'll, I'll let yourselves read that rather than me reading word for word. But um, a little bit of exploration about um, the individual and the, the child, um, building blocks to, to later development, and then understanding the role um, that, that the coaches might play in that. Think it's it's massively important that um, we give them that that love for the game. So bear in mind if you are a, a foundation phase coach, that, um, that particularly that's that's the most um, memorable point for them, and you, you're going to be their inspiration. Um, so just a little quote from from Albert Einstein. Um, moving on to the to the key priorities um, and. When I was looking at this, I think um, 
it be a good reflection tool as well for those that that work in the foundation phase um and thinking coming away from from a session um from the time that you have with your players um and using this as a reflection so um have you have we paid attention to the developing child um so not to get too serious and to understand that they're that they're learning um have we i suppose if you want to go on the 70 percent ball rolling time have we, have we given them enough activities um for physical activity and the game because that's that's what they come for um and then looking at the relationship between the two as coaches and how we can how we can utilize that those key priorities for the foundation phase player so going back to back to the foundation phase the actual child and, and it's important we, we key into that so as you can see on the screen humans have the longest period of childhood of, of, of any primate so you can imagine when you were younger um things used to fly by when when, when you were a kid um, that's because you're developing those new memories um where as an adult time seems to to go on a, a, a wee bit um because we're not forming that as as many new memories so that's really important i think that's a really key message that um you're giving that that child or those those children um th those new memories of, of, of football um so basically can we give them that time to to explore try things out um but above all else play the game um you know we, we don't want to we, we want to be careful when we're coaching in terms of getting too serious as coaches in the foundation phase particularly um, and just letting them explore and try things and I suppose it's um, it's trying to to get the right blend of coaching and keeping that experimental stuff and, and letting them play and find out for themselves so that's the challenge we face in, in the foundation phase. is now joining Dave, I'm okay. just bear with yes. us. Dave, yes. Guys, yeah. I've just I've just asked a, a I've just asked a question in the chat function there. And I suppose what, what we're gonna try and do through these is rather than just have them all sort of content, 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 is is try and get sort of a bit of interaction going and, and engagement. So um for the for those that sort of can see the chat, I've just asked a couple of questions really. So one is how do we as coaches get on at the child's level? Um, and is there anything in particular that anybody does to get to know them as a child? So um, I don't know if anyone wants to either put in the chat function anything that they've done, do that works really well, but more, more just to try and share something. Do you want me to wait for anything, anything to come through, James? No, go on. If you if if those if you want to crack on, and then I'll just feed you back in as we as we go. Yeah, okay, no problem. Um, so um, we're going to look at particularly about around about staying on the ball. Uh, obviously, that's a key message from from what Pete's trying to to get across to people, especially in the foundation phase. Um, so that's uh, we're going to explore that in a little bit more depth. So basically, that's that's what staying on the ball is. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of mixed messages sometimes that comes along on on, on social media and, and and things like that. Um, so what's staying on the ball is he's keeping possession for your team. Um, so it's very much, although we're looking at the, the individual, it's very much a team aspect. Um, more individual time on the ball for the, for the players, um, but also knowing when to share it, uh, and when you when you might pass it, uh, if a teammate's in a, in a better position or you think you're going to lose it, um, then that might be the time to share the ball. So it's not all about dribbling and skills and turning. It's an appreciation of actually we can share the ball. Um, looking for a more attacking option, so playing forward. So can we can we get the the, the foundation players thinking positively rather than going backwards or, or sideways, um, and, and letting them take risks as well, uh, and trying to find out um, really then when they when they might take those risks. Um, turning it away from the pressure, so keeping and shielding it. Um, and again, coming back to that being positive and taking someone on, um, you know, that's the excitement of the game. That's what kids love to do. They love to score goals. They love to take players on. Um, so that's that's what staying on the ball is. Um, and this next one, and this is what it isn't. 
So we're not advocating that the players stay on the ball and they're greedy and they don't pass, um, which is a, a sort of common common misconception around it, I suppose, really. Um, it's not dribbling until you lose it. Um, so we're not advocating that. Um, you get on a one-on-one -on -one and you go and beat one, two, three, four, seven players and then put it in the back of the net. Um, so it's can we share that ball at the right time? Um, obviously, frustrating your teammates if we were advocating players to be ball greedy. So we still want to be very much on the on the team teamwork orientation. Um, it's not always playing the playing the easy ball, which is a common shout from the sidelines. Um, let's not forget, you know. These kids aren't mini adults. They're not going to play like Liverpool and Man City and keep possession all the time. Um, so, so we have to sort of get out of that mindset and, and think about the individual a little bit more. And, and it's definitely not ignoring your teammates well, whilst uh, satisfying their own needs. Did any comments come through on, on, on that just, particular, particular two slides, James? Or? Um, just more if I go back to um go back to the questions bear with me um questions at which i asked earlier on so there's nothing coming through yet on those two um paul so paul said about learning key info about the family likes games school mates etc great simon similar learn the background and key information um Jackie, for me, time to listen to them, remember something they're interested in and build a conversation, plus I'm short enough anyway, as you said that, um, Jackie. Uh, Cam ended up being at school in the final year sixth form, yeah, so it was useful in getting to know them. Uh, I doubt this is very common scenario, like everyone else, um, just to get to know them personally. All right, Paul, just if do you want to unmute yourself, is there anything that you do to actually record that type of thing. So is there anything that's that you've done that where you actually record the information and always say getting to know them? Um how is it that you that you go about it? Um well actually it goes back to level two, James, really. And <clears throat> and and that introduction in the level two project of getting to know your players. Um so I did my level two when my kids were under eights, they're under nines now. Um, so I'd already had them for a year under sevens. And actually doing the level two introduced me to that more, to, to developing that closer relationship with them and finding out, you know, their key interests so that you could have one-to-one -one conversations with them when they were in the group, but slightly outside of the group, if that makes sense, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, Ben's just put in there, so gets a lot of information from parents' social media posts. So what have they, uh, where they've been, what have they been doing, um, and then able to speak to them about it. So again, just another way for coaches to potentially, if you're friends with, I know, I know we're not advocating friends with the kids, but certainly friends with the parents we know a lot of parents now like to put social media stuff on so again um and i think that just the key message around that with the development child is that understanding that they're just a child and they do have a life outside of football and i think what we've what we've sort of seen is that the impact football can actually have on people and certainly on us where i don't know what people do if they're not interested in football i'll be honest with you because i've i've really struggled over the last sort of couple of weeks so um again darren uh, I think Dan and Skiff, yeah. I don't think it was quite 67, Daz. I think it was maybe 57 that Paul done his, his level two, but um, I'll leave tell you about that. Um, yeah, no, no more, Dave, on that. Yeah, good, good. Um, so I'm, I'm sure um, those that attended um, the last uh, the last road show that we did with Pete um, remember the hide manoeuvre and reveal. Um, so that's been on around about staying on the ball and individual possession. Sorry, James, were you going to say something? Uh, no, mate, sorry, I'm just muting myself. All right, okay. Um, so that hide, manoeuvre and reveal. So we're talking about protecting the ball and hiding it, manoeuvre it into, into a position where we think we might be able to um, either 
take them on one on one or or be in a position to share the ball and then that reveal moment when that when that decision making comes in whether it's going to be a pass a little turn or a dribble um so i think that they're quite simple messages that we need to get across to our foundation phase players as coaches um and in a language that they understand as well so that that's why that hide maneuver and, and reveal is there okay um so i suppose just a question to pose so obviously what happens if players are trying to retain possession of the ball as a team options aren't available and the player can't keep the ball as an individual so if, if, if we miss this in the foundation phase that's going to be the problem um when they go into the youth development phase they may not be able to keep the ball as an individual um, likewise if we don't put them in situations where they might be underloaded and um, they might have quite a little bit of pressure um and that's that's helping them um, at the foundation phase, then when they move into that youth development phase, that, that they can have it in tight areas, that they can have it under pressure, um, and when it's under underloaded, so maybe one versus two or two v three. Um, so it's really important we get that right in the foundation phase for their for their future development. And that's that's just really <clears throat> asking us to to have, I suppose a different mindset. So if we take uh, a more narrow focus rather than the bigger picture, so can we view possession as an individual event in the foundation phase particularly? Um, so when the games are being played and in training, um, can we not look at the, at, the, at the bigger picture, so to speak, in terms of the scoreline and things like that? And, and if we have a real narrow focus on that possession as an individual event instead, um, and if we can do that, hopefully, we can help the players master the ball a little bit better, their body and how they might hide, manoeuvre and reveal it, and then the decisions that they make, so keeping the ball at the right time, sharing the ball, etc. Just, uh, just another little quote from Pete. So there is a unique opportunity. There's no better time to influence it. Um, so it's, it's about going back to that first one of the first slides about influencing them, making them fall in love with the game, um, with their attitude towards the sport and learning as well in, in those early years. And just sort of to finish with, I suppose, some, um, some practical tips for those that are working in the foundation phase. Um, as you can see on screen, so making sure that we've got a ball for everybody um, that might turn up. Um, how long do we spend in practices where everyone has the ball? So can we get away from cues and lines um, and things that doesn't excite and, and, and think about actually when we are having contact with our foundation phase players, that we spend more time when everyone has a ball to, to master that ball and, and, and experience being on the ball. Um, how do we maximise the time? So as soon as the players turn up, they have an activity to do. So um, if you've been on a recent level one or level two, um, you'll know the about the arrival activity type stuff. So really, really key to get the the players um, already coming in rather than kicking the balls off the off the walls or the fence. And it's like more of a free for all. Can we get an arrival activity that fits in um, on the same theme for the for the rest of that session, the hour or however many minutes you might have your kids for? So that we're actually maximising our time um, when the players set up and, the, and they're active. Um, relate to, to what the players know. So again, it's getting into that into that child mindset um, and not using language and 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 demonstrating things that that aren't applicable to them. Let's get into their to their mind um, and what the players know. Um, make sure that that the practices are inclusive. Um, and try to limit cues um, and instruction um, and let the players find out for themselves. Um, and I think we just, just touched on it as well with the, with the working with the parents. Um, so can you share with the parents um, the theme of, of the training sessions prior to it? This is what we might be working on for the next two or three, four weeks. So that the players actually, when they get home, the parents can question them sometimes a little bit more on some of the stuff that, that you've been working on as the coach, um, rather than sort of keeping it secretive, let's 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 share it with the parents because let's be honest, they're the biggest influences. 
Um, but last thing is, is they need that ball um, to fall in love with the game. So we must make sure that they get that time with the ball. OK, just to, just to wrap things up, um, as I'm sure most people are aware of, um, that's just a, a link to uh, the FA Learning and the Boot Room uh, and some more information around the, the, the England DNA um, in the foundation phase. OK, so I think uh, that's Texas. Just, that yeah, just, just, just bear with us still because there's a few questions coming in and that so. We'll try and work through um, through them just while you're still on there, mate, if that's all right. So I just asked a couple of things um, around, doo -doo -doo. so what are the coaches' biggest challenges when working like this with the foundation phase um, and any current challenges that people have got? So I think we appreciate that um, what we've set out over the last sort of, sort of three or four seasons is a different way of working. It's probably challenging the traditional approach that we might class it as traditional approach, which is here, whether it is, but it's that sort of how we were brought up playing, um, get the ball forward as quick as we can and let's let's get our quickest players onto it or our biggest players. So this is a challenge and this is a challenge. And the reason sort of we say parents a lot is because that's how parents grew up playing the game as well. So the major challenge we've got is one, how do we understand it and then get it across to our kids? And two, how do we convince our parents that this is the right thing to do? Um, so Johnny, um, Paul, yeah, best part of football is having the ball at your feet. Johnny, huge difference in ability from the players. Some are comfortable on the ball and want to dribble and pass, have a go, whilst others just whack the ball constantly, whether defending or attacking. Um, so do you have any, any sort of thoughts on, so yes, we all know that there's a huge difference in ability in most groups. Yeah. Um how does how would Johnny go about encouraging those players that just want to constantly, I suppose we use the term get read, um, traditionally? How 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 would he go about that? Yeah, so again, obviously, a um, lot of difference in in the foundation phase in in terms of players' squads and and who might be attending your sessions. Um, more more around ball each type stuff. So the more um, activities that you can do with the ball each. So then that, uh, if a player does then kick it out, um, in effect, really, they, they shouldn't have anything else to do because they've lost their ball. Um, so ball each type stuff. Um, but above all else, I think patience. Um, and be really patient with, with, with some kids. Um, they're understanding they might not play a lot, of, a lot of sports. They might not do football as much as other kids. Um, but certainly getting that message across that, that ball and loving the ball and taking care of that ball um, is the key. Um, Johnny, just as well, so just on that, is there uh, any other outside influences that maybe influence the way that the kids play and and, and what they do with it? So I don't know, um, and I don't know your group, and you feel free to unmute yourself, mate, if you want to sort of give a bit more detail to it, but... Generally speaking, uh, defenders, when they receive the ball at the back, are we or our parents just telling them to, to get the ball forward as quickly as they can um, and trying to build that environment where actually it's OK to be on the ball and let's, if, if we give the ball up, it's OK to give it up as long as we've got the right intentions. So um, some little things like that where it's that environment where actually we, when I say environment, I mean parents, yourself as coaches and and the players, they feel they feel okay to be on it. Um, so again, yeah, there's there's some certain things that that you could potentially do with your parents around. Look, when they're on the ball, we want to stay on the ball, uh, and that's what I'm asking them to do. And if we're explicit like that, then hopefully um, people will start to get the message. Um, there's a game. I think it's on FA Learning at the minute, and I'll try and share it with you after this, Johnny, and send you it across. And it's the um, there's a couple of games which encourage people just to stay on the ball rather than rather than uh, lift the ball away. Um, so I'll find that and dig that out for you. Cam, uh, I'm going to come back to your question, mate, at the end of this, if that's all right, because I know it's just taken away from the thread. Um, but I will I will answer it around the ball rolling time. Um, so Cam, just I'll come back to it anyways. Um, biggest challenge is parents. So Paul, they have to be informed about what they uh, are trying to deliver. Yeah, so... 
one of the things that we've been doing, and David, I don't know if you want to add to this after this, but one of the things I've been encouraging certainly on courses is to do your team talks next to parents. Now, that's slightly, uh, it is a challenge, but um, just so that you know and the parents know what they're, what you're saying to the kids. So if they can hear your team talk, um, if they can hear your team talk, then they can share some of the key information that you've been saying with them. Um, Dave, so that was Paul's question was that um, biggest challenge is the parents and they've got to be informed and potentially how do we inform them? Yeah, yeah. I've got anything on that? Yeah, so um, obviously, like you say, doing the team talking for the parents, but I think going, going a little bit sort of bigger picture than that and, and sharing the themes that, that, that we're working on as coaches. So um, I know um, I know Ben's done done quite a, a, a bit of work with the parents um, at St B's. Um, I don't know if, if, if Ben, you want to come in and, and, and share some stuff as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm dealing with a. Uh, I was dealing with Stephen Rudd on the phone on WhatsApp. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, no, I don't think I've done anything that's dramatic. I think we've just we've what we've done is wrote down our philosophy. Um, we've given we, they all get the start. So as soon as they join the club, they get some information around what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it, um, and we just have we do all of our team talks in front of the parents. Um, we've also involved the parents in, we have man of the match attacks where two packs of match attacks are given out to a player to share with his teammates, but the parents make the decision and it's based on what we've been working on in training um, and on attitude as well. So they, again, so they're, they're having to watch the things that we've done in training. Um, and obviously we set up um, some, what we we call, obviously I coach for St. So we set up some work around um B squad behaviour for the kids, but also um, we set some challenges for the parents as well around their watching behaviour and how they fed back to the kids um, around what we've been working on as well. So we've, nothing that I think is is dramatic. I think just um, stuff that I've pinched off other coaches that I've gone round or reallocated, as I like to call it. I know. I mean, don't undersell yourself. Some, some of the stuff you've done. Is- cracking um, but I think it all boils down to being open and honest with the parents uh, and saying this is what um, I believe in this is what we're working on um, and and getting the players to help you and assist you rather than working against them yeah and I, I think I know, I know Chris uh, it could be your question Chris but I know Chris Blake's on the call um, and I know that they so Chris worked in the in the sort of pro side of things Chris I don't know if you want to mute yourself and and just share some of the stuff that you guys done with with the parents to try and keep them informed. I know it's on a much greater scale in terms of you you were sort of from a professional academy, but ultimately there is some things that the coaches can take to just try and do those little simple things. Hello. Hiya, Chris. Hi, sorry, no, I wasn't working. You uh, all right, Matt? Yeah, obviously I've, I've just moved on. Um, from from Carlisle, but uh, the the next sort of big stage was to get the parents more involved in what we were trying to do as often as possible, and that was a the big the big one was the uh, start of the season induction meetings, um, but putting a bit more detail in it other than the bus is going to pick you up on a Sunday, actually giving a bit of insight into the football and the use of video on the PMA, uh, which was a website that we used to. Uh, just give a bit more insight and and the next stage after that was going to be like proper inside of insight events um so we were sort of messing around with that i don't know where carlisle are with that now whether they're going to go to that obviously um bigger things are happening in the world right now but just uh, giving them a little bit more insight letting them know what we were trying to achieve each week uh generally seems to keep things calmer and uh lets them focus on something uh, we found that to be quite successful in the early stages. Spot on, Matt. Um, I think that the key messages that are coming out, certainly with with parents, is um, if we don't include them, we leave them guessing, and that's been a that's a real challenge. So I look now at um, my four year olds just started preschool, um, and the school have a, an app called Tapestry. I'm sure I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. Uh, where they update constantly around what he's doing. So I have 
when I get in from work, I have any if he's still up, I have a um some of the questions I'll ask will ask him will be based on what he's done. The challenge we've got, and I know Ben has a probably a complete different experience to I do. Um so the challenge we've got is that if if we're included, we can ask relevant questions and we feel like we're a part of it. Think of that like your coaching. So if all you do all the time is take your kids to the furthest point away from the parents and you have a little huddle and a little discussion and then they go back out, parents are just going to second guess and that's the only option they've got. So I think the, the biggest message certainly on, on the stuff that I've been doing is just being open and honest with them and being and being there to be in front of them. And I know Ben will tell you, Ben's been working with uh, an under sort of tens group now for for a lot uh, um, uh, last four years, I think, and um, he has still been shut down and he still constantly gets shut down. But I think there's a clarity and an open honesty to say this is what we're doing um, and this is the reasons why. Um, good stuff, Chris. So Chris, one of Chris's questions was, and I think it mentioned you mentioned it, Dave. Uh, how much instruction is too much instruction, and how much is necessary? Um, yeah, so I mean. Again, what we've got to be careful of is we work if if we're working in the foundation phase, um, and we take away that love of the game, um, because we're too precious about getting some, if you like, some technical or tactical information across. Um, so I suppose that's got to be the balance. Um, are the kids enjoying it? And some kids um, might be able to take on a little bit more, um, if you like. Uh, coaching points or, or hints or questions around the technical side where others it might be way too much so I suppose um, the right answer to that is um, to take it on an individual basis and if the kids are still enjoying um, what they're doing and you can spend um, a little bit of time with them however that might look so stay away from instruction and go on a little bit more maybe question and answer um, and it doesn't have to be a, a, a serious sort of football technical approach. Um, you can just get get into their language and, and, and just have a conversation. Um, so don't underestimate by just having a conversation with someone um, in the foundation phase that you can actually influence and, and pass on that knowledge. Um, so I suppose it's just really trying to stay away from instruction and can we use different interventions that are more, if you like, foundation phase friendly um, and develop that that thirst for knowledge and that, and that curiosity. Good stuff. Um, Jackie, uh, with the training being restricted to a time slot, you've got to set up when they arrive so they have to be ready to get the balls and bibs etc. Kids excited to get a ball and have a kick around. Jackie, just out of interest, do you want to unmute yourself? What, is there a Forgive my um thing. Is there a question in there that you're that you're sort of looking at? No, it was just really to say that's one of the challenges that I find. Oh, oh. With you. Yeah, um, and it was just to say that when you hit the pens, it's it's manic to get in there, get set up and try and kick people off and this, that and the other. And that's yeah. all it was really. So that's one of the challenges I've just find. Yeah, so, yeah. I, yeah. I suppose and I'll, I'll share that with the wider sort of wide mm -hmm. audience that's on here now is that um what do people do to, to keep the kids occupied? So, yes, it's an absolute classic example of I've got a training pen. There's one door in and one door out. And the other team don't come off till dead on six o'clock, usually a minute past when you've had to go in and kick them out. Um, you've got 15 kids under nines, under tens running around outside the area. What are the things that people do um, or what, what, what could you do to try and keep all them kids in one place so that yes you can go and be the bad person that kicks the team out but um also you've got control over your kids is does anyone do anything dave have you got out that you'd recommend yeah so i, I suppose it, engaging them um in terms of what we talked about earlier in the, in the social corner so um whilst you're waiting for that maybe a few minutes for, for the next team to come off um get chatting to them asking them about the day what they've done at school um, maybe even um, give them a flavour of what's to come in the session. So this is what we're going to work on tonight. But any, anything that, that's going to engage them socially, and it doesn't have to be on a, on a, on a football uh, level, it can be just finding out about, about how they've day, been, and, and, and that's the social corner sort of in action priority going on. 
Simon's just, I'll just pick up on Simon. Simon's just put Simon Cookson's just put a really good point in there, and that could be using what Dave's just suggested, Jackie. So reflect on the last game. What were the things? So Simon said, yeah, what were the things that went uh, well? What were the things that they need to work on? So depending on the age as well, but um, I always find a whiteboard. So give kids a whiteboard with a load of pens and they'll draw whatever you want. Um, so even with the real younger kids, draw what you enjoyed about the last game. Um, draw what you didn't enjoy about it and that gives you something to work on it also keeps if you imagine that bees around a honey point type mentality so uh, keeps them keeps them kids around one area in a, in a safe area um, so yeah um, there's a couple of things if anyone's got anything else just just shout up uh, Ben's just put in there so yeah um, and it's something that um, I don't think we we do a lot of but if nobody's, if you're not on the hive pages um, for the foundation phase DNA, you need to get on them. Um, it's the the content is unbelievable. So we could literally sit here for for hours and talk about all the content that's on it. But uh, Pete still put all the content together, and I think you'll all you'll have all seen him work or heard of him at some point. He's an absolute genius with the sort of kids, the younger kids. So um, have a look on that. Ben said what's worked really well for him is he shared it. With his parents so ask your parents to join it send them the link in the whatsapp group um get yourselves downloaded hive get yourselves on there guys this is the stuff that we're working on um to to help them understand a little bit more about what this type of thing and what we're talking about because it is a change in mindset um graham ask the children to create their own teams good stat what a great point graham so um again there jackie um there's another thing ask the the children to create their own teams outside so that when that door does open um off you go there's there's your teams created um and they're and they're playing straight away and, and to even add to that ben's just said they also beef them up so get them in the team so that as soon as the door opens um you can get them playing straight away and um, it kind of brings us on to cam's question so i haven't forgot about it mate um cam's question was uh is that separate but still on the same topic Cameron I think them them last points introduce it nicely uh what are your thoughts on ball rolling time percentage the FA use I've been told it's just an arbitrary figure made up based on kind of Southgate session if so how often should the ball be rolling um so do you want to take it Dave or me um yeah I mean we can both we can both oh, do a little bit I mean I mean, the the ball rolling time it was mainly to 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 keep players active. Um, so if, if we go back to the, it was initially designed with the with the England national team. So um, keeping keeping the players active and playing, but not necessarily um, actually playing. So if it's if it's active learning, um, then and that's keeping them interested or keyed into the theme of the session, then that's that's the main thing at the foundation phase. So it doesn't have to be actual playing. Um, that ball rolling time could be could be the active learning. But, um, but like, like I say, it's just about players players being active. Um, and what we want to take away and, and minimise is um, stopping the whole group um, where the coach then demonstrates his or her knowledge for the next two or three minutes and that kids have stood still um, and being bored. Um, and I suppose that's really what it is. So as long as... Um, the, the the players are moving and it's active learning, which could be around a tactics board. It could be a little question and answer. Uh, it could be a drive-by intervention. Um, that's what that's really what the ball rolling time means. Yeah, um, I think so. And and on the the thing came around that where did it come from? So I think I've seen a clip and I think it's live on the internet. So it's not something that I'm I'm talking out of turn with. Um, that it was Dan Ashworth sort of. Um, when he came in as technical director, I think Dan done some work with the England teams, as Dave just said there, and looked at the amount of time that they weren't active during the session. And I think there was a clear. I'm not. I'm not sure if it was Gareth Southgate session, by the way. So I, I wouldn't know on that. But um, if he he done a, a study around how much time, how much the ball was rolling with the England teams and the amount of downtime there was. And he, I think, came to the conclusion that there was far too much downtime within the sessions. And I think that was across the piece, um, not just in one session. So 
they they looked at well what what would we they want to achieve um, and there was some pillars that came out so it wasn't just the ball rolling time that came out if you look at the coaching fundamental pillars the 12 pillars that are in all level one level two now that we're, we're working on with coaches and um, that's where they were born out of i'm sure there is i will try and look at the clip where it's dan ashworth talking um on it because it gives a far better description than i do but that's where they were born out of i think ultimately so is it enough in my opinion if we're getting higher percent of ball rolling time, it probably means that the kids are, are doing something more. And when we say ball rolling time, we don't just mean a single ball rolling in the session. Um, it might be, but but certainly in the foundation phase, we're looking at, at that active learning, as, as Dave mentioned there. So um, is it high enough? I don't know. Um, can we get higher? Uh, hopefully. So if we turn up, and that's why some of the, the when we said about the practical um tips was does everybody have a ball so is everybody available if they turn up that they might have a chance to spend some time with the ball and if we go back to johnny's stuff around um massive ability difference then ultimately them kids that want to just get rid of the ball probably need to spend more time with the ball um so yeah uh, my my thing would be that it, we need to keep it as high as we can uh, and we just remember why the kids come, especially in this phase. Um, why do why do they turn up? They turn up to probably play the game. So, um, yeah, to try and keep it. Hey, I don't know if that answers your question, Cam. If you want to unmute yourself and add anything else to it. Yeah, that, that's spot on. I, I just I think it makes more sense to include active learning and stuff in it rather than the, the name ball rolling time is probably a bit misleading, then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it's. I mean, it's one of the pillars of the twelve mate. So, and I think that what they tried to do was say that we need activity in the session. It could be classed as active learning, but that might be. I don't know. Is that harder to interpret for others? I'm not sure about. But yeah, that's that's the idea behind it, anyways. I, I think think as well. It, um, it's it's our test you as a coach, um, because it's trying to get away from that. Right, I'm going to stop everyone. Um, and we impart a little bit of knowledge while everyone stood, but actually, can you keep that ball rolling and and the kids active, learning and playing, while still imparting, um, and and making some interventions, um, to to either a, a individual, individual, small group or or the whole group. So, I suppose looking at your intervention strategies. So it's not just I'm going to stop stop practice and stop everyone. Um, it may be looking at um, some practice structure. So. If I go on a whole part whole and, and, and start to start to structure the session that way, what do my interventions look like if I want to keep everyone playing? So it might be a bit of question and answer, it might be the drive by, um, it might be small group discussions where two or three of them are involved in asking each other questions around the tactics board. So it does definitely test you as as a coach to um, use a variety of, of in, uh, interventions. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just I'm conscious of time as well, so it's coming up to eight, and I've got a, just a couple of things just to set us up for well, one a bit of consultancy. So Dave, do you want to empty yep. your screen, and I'll if I request control of you, mate, and um, then I'll come back onto my. You should have that, mate. Yeah, if I just share. I just check. Dave, can you see my screen? Just give us a second, it'll come through, I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, so just just one last sort of thing to finish on with that. Each week I'm gonna try and drop in a, a bit of a, a call it a practice of the week or a practice of the coffee club. So just one thing that based on the theme that we've been talking about. So some of these might be simple. Some of these, um, when we talk next week, um, might be a little bit different. So, um, and I'll, I'll email this to everybody just so you've got a copy of it. Um, so it's just a, a simple game that, that might encourage kids to stay on the ball um, and a little bit of competition involved in there. So just a game of box tag, um, something that will help you. Um, so pretty straightforward. It's something I'll be honest as well. And I'm thinking, how can we how can we do it in these times with the with your son or daughter in the garden? Um, so setting up a box and, and chasing them and, and seeing how uh, how far you get. So pretty straightforward. This will go out on on email to you just so you've got a copy of it. 
Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Okay. I suppose it's it's kind of um, what I wanted to know a um, little bit about. This is the first time we've done something like this where we're going to try and deliver something every week online uh, for people, given the circumstances. Obviously, there's there's no football being played. Um, don't shoot us, please, at Cumberland FA. Decisions are made far above our heads. Um, we are merely the, the messengers in a lot of this. Um, but I just wanted to get a feel for people. Um, I spoke to a couple of guys that are going to come on this with us in the next few weeks, asked them their availability. Um, and they pretty much just turned around and said to me, when do you want me available? I can do whenever you want. Um, I have got nothing in my diary at the minute and we're all inside. So um, it's just to try and get an idea and if people could comment um, what day of the week's best for people. So uh, granted, there's nobody out training now. So it, I thought when I was writing, is it a stupid question to ask? But I said, I'm going to ask it anyways. Um, so is there a best day of the week for people? Is there a better time for people? And when I mean time, um, that can be any time. So is mornings better? Is afternoons better? Is evenings is the best for people? Um, I appreciate that it's certainly in the west of the county anyways, we have, a, as you all know, a big nuclear power plant and, and some workers are still working, some aren't. So again, I just want to try and give the, the opportunity for everybody to get involved. Um, any particular people that you want to hear from? Um, if we can't get them now, we're never going to be able to get the people. So whilst I will not be able to get your first team coaches, managers, Jürgen Klopp is not coming on to speak to anybody in Cumberland. Um, we will probably be able to get our net as far as we can. So people have got free time now. So if there's anybody in particular you'd like to hear from within the game um, that you feel is within our grasp, when I say that, um, please be realistic. Um, but let us know and, and we will do our best to see who we can get. Um, or any role. So if you're thinking, actually, I'd like to hear from an academy manager. I'd like to hear from um, a head of coaching. I'd like to hear from, I don't know, um, Beck, chief exec of, of the Cumberland FA. If, if there's a role that you'd like to hear from, again, just please let us know. You might not know the person, but we might have somebody in mind. Um, and ultimately as well, I suppose the question is how frequently. So I've pitched these at once a week to start with. Um, if you want them more often, Great. The topics will be there'll be a huge variety of topics. So next week won't be about the foundation phase. Uh, we're looking older next week um, with the with the guests that we've got on, and I'm going to share that with you next. Um, but again, how frequently do you want them to run? So once a week enough for your fix? Is it twice a week? Um, just I, I'm taking it based on what you guys want really. So again, it's it's open. Um, if you just want to drop in the chat function there. Um, and yeah, that's the key thing. Um, we want to try and make them as meaningful as we can, um, just so that they're better for you, really. So um, we can come up with content galore um, and pull content from various different sources that we have access to. But again, we want to make them more meaningful. Um, I'm going to do, and, and so Cam's on the call now, and I know Cam's doing, uh, Cam's doing an awful lot the minute around analysis stuff. Um, so again, it'd be good to, to maybe touch base with you, Cam, and maybe get some stuff set up around the analysis work that you're doing, um, especially given our next week's speak, which I'm going to share with you next. Ben, I don't know what the general consensus is there, mate, because I can't, uh, I can't see. Um, yeah, there's, uh, I think there's one with Southgate, but then I think you must have made the comment about be realistic. So Pete Sturgis was then... Uh, his second comment yeah. um, that was from Darren, and then a lot around the social corner. Um, okay. So psychologist, social corner specialist, and Paul suggested um, potentially Sally Needham. Yeah. Um, uh, Chris Blake has put Murph Roberts. Um, yeah. As as a potential person to speak about, I put on that not even I would want to hear about a CEO of a, a <laughs> county affair. So I don't think that that one will be uh, airing anytime soon. Um, uh, basically, uh, people have there's not an awful lot about when's best on there at this moment in time. Um, Darren said he he'll be free if he's free and he's not at work. He'll be on here. Um, Huey says every Thursday same time is good for him. So I, I don't think you've got a all right. answer. Uh, Chris Blake says this time works, but free all day. Um, 
Yeah, Rowdy's put any time, pal, and that's through a WhatsApp message. So, um, yeah. Yeah. After no, six brother. from Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Loads of stuff on there, mate, now. Good stuff. Good stuff. Right. Well, I'm, I'm conscious of time and I, I don't want to interrupt the, the clap for the NHS. So, just wanted to quickly say, um, please share this on your coaches' WhatsApp group, send it on social media accounts. Let other coaches know what we want to try and do is get a community of practicing where everybody's in together in Cumberland. Um, I'm looking at potentially set up of a WhatsApp group. Don't know if that's overkill for people. Um, but as the sort of weeks go on and, and the correspondence comes out to you, so I'll, I'll keep you in the loop. Um, contact us on, on any of them. So my email, my phone number there, and my Twitter. This is going to be recorded, so I'm going to work out how I share the recording with you. You can share it to other coaches, etc., and we can go from there. Um, Next week, so just just so you know, next week's guest, some of you might know him, some of you won't. Um, <coughs> Matt Craddock's coming on. He's going to be on for an hour with us, maybe slightly longer next week. Um, Matt's the head of coaching at uh, Preston North End. He's a great bloke. Um, he's he, he really is a top bloke, and he's just wanted to share some stuff. Um, so we're going to look potentially at an overview of his journey, philosophy of what happens there. Um, so playing and coaching, how the academy and first team work together in the link. Um, he's been doing a lot of work on the minute on finish the attack, which is a specific theme of work that he's been working on. So if a specific themes of interest to people, then what we can do is, and Matt, Matt kindly said that um, there might be too much there for one thing and he doesn't mind doing two. So I'll get people's thoughts on that through the week. And there'll be an opportunity to ask Matt any questions about his role um, in the academy. So Matt, like I say, Matt's a head of coaching um, at a football league club. So again, hopefully that that helps. Um, and that's for next Thursday at seven o'clock. All I'll leave you with is please, um, if we can help in any way during this time, please contact us. It's a strap line going around at the minute from, from the FA, which is stay home, stay safe and stay active. Um, and what I'd, if you could, if you found it valuable, uh, leave a comment on social media for us. If you haven't found it valuable, don't, don't, just don't slaughter us for it. Um, just don't look back in next time. No, I'm only joking. Um, leave us a comment, however, however you found it. Um, and I think that's about time. Um, I think it's eight o'clock for the NHS clap. So um, feel free, guys, if you want to log off, um, do so now. And I will speak to you all um, next Thursday at the same time, seven o'clock. Tell everybody gone. Andrew Marshall is now exiting. <laughs> would have to be Marshy, that wouldn't it? Like. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>